three. Jack Taldano speaking for all or not according to Jack. I'm here with uh, my good buddy, Dave Creighton. How you doing, Davey? Great, uh, thanks, Jack. I think you know what we're here to discuss tonight. We are here, yes, the New York Mets. And, and I wore this jacket just for everybody's quick benefit to show everybody uh, what I wear, you know, early spring and late fall when uh, the weather turns, but we're still having summer-like weather here in the New York area, so no jacket required. Yep, as Phil Collins would say, back into the 70s, temperature-wise, Fahrenheit, yep. that is. Where's your, where's your Met shirt? I, I was uh, expecting you to wear one. I just threw my work shirt back on. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, in any event, uh, it just to recap, I think everybody in the world knows what happened last night. So, the Mets and uh, Milwaukee Brewers threw the first six innings, goose eggs all around. So, it was 0-0 zero, zero, going into the bottom of the seventh. Two solo homers by the Brewers. The Mets were just not doing anything with their bats. No runs in the eighth inning for either team. Uh, Mendoza made the decision to uh, to put, to bring in Diaz early, which turned out to be a very good decision. Uh, shut down their rally in the seventh, pitched the eighth, but he he had thrown thirty eight pitches to that point. So then the ninth comes ninth inning. We're facing uh, the the Brewers closer. Uh, what's his name, Derek? Devin Williams. Devin Williams, yes. A guy who throws a really good fastball and a really good changeup. And remember that because that's going to be key in our discussion. So and he is one of the preeminent closers in Major League Baseball. Yes. So he um so uh Lindor gets on with a walk. Two batters later, Nimmo hits a single, Nimmo gets to third. Uh, um, Lindor gets to third so what's very important so then Polar Bear comes up and he was 1 for 11 in the series leading up to that point and honestly I thought the game was over I didn't think there was any I thought they were left for dead there was no way they were going to come back uh, so what does Polar Bear do he works to count to 3 and 1 and then hits hits one over the wall in right field. Uh, Mets take a three to two lead. Then they tack on another insurance run um, with Jesse Winker getting on, stealing second. And then I'm sorry, what what uh, who got the hit after him? Starling Marte. Starling Marte. Thank you. Yeah, this brain uh, I'm having a a little touch of the olds tonight. But <laughs> but uh, so but the discussion. And George pointed this out to me, my future son-in-law, who I'm going to watch both the Mets and Yankees games with him tomorrow night. But uh, he pointed out that it was rumored that Devin Williams was tipping his pitches. It was the way he was holding the ball when he was uh, holding his glove and uh, and the way his, for fastballs, his, his hand was deeper in the glove. Whereas... For cha for a changeup, he had to keep his hand a little out of the glove because supposedly you grip the ball different and you kind of palm the ball when you when you're throwing a changeup. Right. So I think it was in Iglesias who pulled him aside and say, "Well, watch what he's doing." So he, he knew that freaking changeup was coming, and he and he knew it was gonna. I guess I, he knew it was being set up outside, so he was ready, and and he freaking clubbed it. So, but you know what? Ingenious strategy. And uh, that's why they are where they are. So comments before I uh, show my quick video? Well, it was a great victory. It was very unexpected. I was getting ready for work last night and I had the game on and I saw the two homers by the Brewers and I thought that the Mets were goners because they hadn't done anything all game uh, Francisco Lindor was the only one. He had two hits that led nowhere. I think the only other base runner was uh, Jesse Winker, who got hit by a pitch twice in the game. 
Right in the elbow guard, both times, yeah. Hmm. And then he stole the base and Marte got the hit, which led to the insurance run, run which I thought was big because Yo. Milwaukee are such a fast team and yeah. they just steal bases like that. They're a great team. I don't want to insult the Brewers at all. I'm glad yeah. the Mets won, obviously, because I'm a Mets fan. But they beat an excellent team, oh, a yeah. team that's hard to beat that had a very good year. I have a fun fact for you later, um, okay. which my boss actually shared with me. I'll share it with you and, and everybody watching. But, uh, yeah, so uh, it, it was it was an amazing victory. I, I, I actually – I think I was we were we were IMing each other, but yes. After that top of the ninth inning, I was so freaking nervous. I actually went outside to take a walk halfway down the block. I just I needed to calm my nerves. But wow, when, see, was, I I thought you had to walk your dog. No, no, no. That was me walking me because I was oh. so freaked. <laughs> Miley uh, was already in bed with Susan, so yeah. Well, she sleeps in our room, but she's got her own doggy bed. She doesn't sleep on the bed, but, um, but yeah, no, I, I had to calm my nerves. And when I got back, I, I didn't even realize, uh, and this was a brilliant move by Carlos Mendoza, pulling Diaz out of the game because that's what I was afraid of. He was going to blow it somehow because sometimes he, he has control problems. Sometimes... And with the stuck, walks yeah absolutely and then he overcompensates throwing it in the strike zone and what do they do like uh, they did with the braves uh that three-run triple to yep. they tied the game but so so what does mendoza do he brings in david peterson their their top starter uh yep. who hadn't pitched in a few days and he was his arm is fresh so you know he brought him in uh, gave up a single, struck out the next guy, and then uh, very fitting, Lindor taking charge, takes that ground ball, steps on second himself, guns it to uh, Alonzo, who, by the way, has played an excellent first base throughout the, you know, uh, the postseason and uh, the Atlanta game. So my full credit, kudos to, uh, to you know, Alonzo. Game over. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share a, uh, a quick video, uh, Howie Rose doing the call, but also it, it's a split screen. It's going to show the shape, the City Field crowd because there were people. There was a watch party at City Field because, but unfortunately, the Mets aren't home. They, they, they haven't been home for over a week. They're like the road warriors. Yep. And after you show the clip, I just want to say a few things about Alonzo and his fielding. And when I went to work last night, going from Queens, where I lived by City Field to Brooklyn, all the lights were on and there was some traffic coming out of City yeah. Field. Oh, yeah. OK, so here we go. Let me share. All right. And here we go. William Sets. Here's the pitch. Swinging a fly ball to right field. Pretty well hit. Freelick back at the wall. He jumps. It's gone. He did it. He did it. Pete Alonso with the most memorable home run of his career. Pumps his fist as he rounds second. It's a three-run homer. He's given the Mets a three-to-two lead. They all pour out of the dugout. Alonso on his way to home plate. They're waiting for him. He hits the plate. He is first congratulated by Nimmo. Hug by Lindor. There are a dozen Mets waiting for him outside the dugout. Pete Alonso keeps this fairy tale season going with the fairy tale swing of his career. Three to two New York. This ball. Whoa. Awesome, eh? Yes. Back on so. Cal. So that uh, no that requires no words, but I'll have more afterwards. But uh, go ahead. What, what... what I was going to say about Alonzo, everyone knows he didn't have the best year offensively. I mean, he still hit a lot of home runs. Got what was it about thirty home runs, eighty 34, RBIs, 30, or thirty four so. homers? Yeah, and I think eighty RBIs. Right. But uh, Francisco Lindor is really the guy that carried the team, the guy that stepped up to be the leader of the team, oh, yeah. especially in the clubhouse when 
he helped the team turn it around and he turned his own year around in May. And then from June on, they had the best record in baseball. Right. So they started off poorly. As we discussed when we went to the game, I thought they won the first five games. And you said, no, they lost the first five games of the season. Yes. Yes, they did. Yeah. So they started out 0-5 and, and now they, they became a wild card team and they're in the playoffs. But Alonzo's defense has been good all year. And from what I recall, when everyone wanted the Mets to bring Alonzo to the team, the Mets management was saying, well, he's not really ready. He needs a little more work defensively. And I think he's always been a very good underrated first baseman in the field. I got to tell you, I think he's a he's a candidate for, for a, a gold glove this year. That's how good he's played. I mean, uh, balls that he's dough for, but keeping his uh, his grimace cleats on the bag. I mean, he, he is wearing uh, purple cleats to, to signify grimace, so. It's like my purple shirt. Yep, yep. Yeah, he uh, does some great stretches, and for a yeah. big, bulky guy, he's good at first base. Oh, he's yeah. no Keith Hernandez, but few are. But you, you know what, though? He's been, he's really been sucking up those, those, uh, those balls thrown his way. I mean, Lindor, I mean, to his credit, he he gives him the best throws, but uh, everybody else, you know, he's he's really handled them. Yeah. Very done well. Great, done a great job, but uh, uh, I'm going to basically give you a hodgepodge of things. So uh, Okay. My I signed off a little early today because I wasn't that busy. Uh, it was a nice afternoon off. Um, but, uh, but before we did that, my boss and I were talking because one of my bosses is, so I have two bosses. One's a Met fan, one's a Yankee fan. So my Yankee fan boss, I, I basically told him I was hoping for, uh, I'm going to root for both teams because I want a Subway Series again. And he's, he said, I want no part of the Mets. But uh, would take my chances with any opponent if you told me we will be in the World Series. I saw a stat the other day. Every team that has beaten the Brewers in the playoffs has advanced to the World Series. It was a decent-sized list. So are you ready? Yes. The 81 Yankees. 82 Cardinals is incorrect because they faced the Cardinals in the World Series, but they lost. The 08 Phillies. The 2011 Cardinals. The 2018 Dodgers. The 19 Nationals the 2020 Dodgers, the 2021 Braves, the 2023 Diamondbacks, and now the 2024 Mets. Wow. So, wow, that that's incredible. That's that's a that's a lot of losses uh, not getting to the uh, you know World Series, but uh, and, and every team is as base that has beaten them has gotten there. So that that's one omen. Another omen the Mets have never lost an NLDS series. I don't know if you knew that or not. No. 1999, and this is right off my head. This is not even looking at my phone. Um, 1999, they beat the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks in four games. 2000, they beat the San Francisco Giants in four games. Um, 2006, they swept the Dodgers, three games to none. 2015, they had to, they had to go five games against the Dodgers, but they they ended a game beat them in game five out in uh, Dodger Stadium with uh, with all of uh, Daniel Murphy's heroics. So they are four and zero oh against uh, in the NLDS. They they've had worse luck in the NLCS, but whatever. You know what? At the, from this point on, uh, as they were saying on SNY last night, they're playing with house money. And and I firmly believe that. And they, they can do no wrong for me now. So they ended up having a great year. Yeah. Ever since and and oh another thing I wanted to tell you. So I, I had a lodge meeting the other night at one of my affiliate lodges, and one of the you know, I'm a lot of friends there, great guys, but one guy kind of rubbed me the wrong way. He actually 
So the picture that you saw of me in my Jesse Orozco pose, I don't know if you saw that on Facebook. He, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, George took a picture of me posing. Oh, when you were down on your knees. Yes, yes. yes. I did in, see it. In okay. my living room, yep. He said he was pissed off because of all the uh, the complaining I did early in the season. You know, because, you know, you get caught up in uh, in the social media stuff and they suck and they're horrible yep. and uh, it's another lost season. But I'm like, come on. Early June, I stopped. I, I All I wanted them to do was be competitive and start playing up to their capabilities. And you know what? Lindor really got the job done. And you know what? The starting staff doesn't get enough credit. They, they, I think they have been our rock. They have been so freaking solid for us. Uh, without them, we couldn't have done this at all. And I do want to point out, because it worked last night, I listened to a lot to our local sports station, WFAN. Yeah. Who, they carry Yankee games, but the talk of the night after the football game was over was all about the Mets. Yeah. And so all the hosts say. were praising the Mets, even though they may have been Yankee fans. Right. And they said that the Phillies wanted the Brewers to win because the Phillies want nothing to do with the Mets. So the Mets have really good momentum going into this. Hell yeah. And, and now you and I are going to be in a battle. And when I say battle, I use the term loosely yeah. with our friends, uh, John Clauser and John the Music Nut, both from Pennsylvania. They're both Phillies fans. There's more. I have a cousin, Nancy, who lives in the Allentown area, who's a, who's a, a and her son and her husband John, they're uh, they're they're Phillies fans and they're Eagles fans, and apparently he has uh, Eagles season tickets. So, so if the, if that isn't a family rivalry, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, no no trash talk or anything. All she said to me was, "It's going to be a great series." But deep down, I think I think everybody in Philadelphia is nervous because you know what. We play very well in, 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 in uh, Citizens Bank ballpark. I mean, it's a bandbox. Uh, if you think they can hit home runs here at City Field, go go to, to Citizens Bank ballpark. They love hitting there. Everybody hit on the Mets can hit home runs there. Good. And, and and you know what? Alonzo doesn't just clear the fence. He hits moonshots there. Great. Let's hope this unlocked him. Yeah, hope, yeah. And that he, he goes on a big tear right now. That's what everyone's hoping. Yeah, but uh, in any event, so uh, I uh, the, that uh, game one matchup tomorrow night's pretty interesting. Just my see. cousin, my cousin Jonathan, told me the Mets are going to have Kodai Senga start for them. Yeah, which totally surprised me. Well, you know that in a in a way, it's a good thing. I mean, you know what now. Carlos Mendoza has now earned my trust. He can do no wrong now. Uh, I think if he thinks he's ready, then I'm fine with it. All, all I would ask, just monitor his warm-ups, make sure you, his arm strength is there, give us five or six good innings, and you know what? We're going to face Zach Wheeler, but who knows? I'm praying that because he used to be a Met, uh, that they might have some kind of scouting report on him. And, Let's hope. Yeah. And speak, speaking of pitchers, obviously because Alonzo had that home run, which put the Mets ahead of the Brewers last night, Jose Quintana, the starting pitcher, went six innings Beautiful. and allowed no runs. He did great, yeah. Yes. He really stepped up. And a lot of the Mets pitching staff, especially the starters, have stepped up towards yeah. the end of the year and the postseason. We've had so little... Jose, he's going to get forgotten about yeah. in all this because it's the story, the shot heard around the world, the home run, the Mets yeah. took the lead, they won yeah. the series, they're moving on, the Brewers aren't. But Jose Quintana deserves a lot of credit, yes. as does manager Carlos Mendoza, of course. Absolutely. But uh, Quintana, you mentioned it, which is a great thing. Yes, he deserves a ton of credit as do all our starters. My only worry, our middle, our middle um, relievers, are, I think, are hurting us a little bit. Uh, they didn't uh, game one against Milwaukee, but last night they did a little bit. Uh, they hurt us in that first 
game against the Braves where they kind of let us back in, you know, let the Braves back in. Oh, oh no, it was Diaz who let him back into the game. So, uh, the Braves. But then we went ahead in the ninth inning with uh, Lindor's homer. And luckily, he held the one-run lead. Luckily. Thank God. Knock on wood. That's why that insurance run last night to me was so important. Oh, yeah. Yes, but I didn't even realize that. And, and it was a brilliant move bringing Peterson in, especially since it was the deciding game. Right. But uh, here's another statistic. Uh, I, I took it. Actually, I took a picture of my TV screen and uh, I'm going to read. And I was watching uh, the wrap-up show on SNY last night. So this is a very poignant stat. Pete Alonzo, first player in major MLB history to hit a go-ahead home run while trailing in the ninth inning or later of a winner-take-all postseason series. Uh, who was the one who did it in 1960? Was it Bobby Richardson, I think, the shot heard around the world? I'm not sure, but I thought Alonzo was the first one to do it. No, what I'm saying is I think that was a tie game that he he broke the tie. I think it was between the Dodgers and the Giants or the Pirates or Bill Mazeroski, one of them. It's before I, my time. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was 1960, but what I'm going to say I think it was Bill Mazeroski that hit that home run to end that uh, mini series because they were tied. Back then, they didn't have an NLCS, but it, because they were tied, they had a, you know, uh, oh, you know, they they decided at the last minute, let's make it a three-game series. And he, and he uh, but I think the game was tied, and he hit the home run in the bottom of the ninth. But basically, Alonzo is the first one to hit it when, the, when his team was trailing, ninth right. inning or later. I mean, so now he surpasses Bill Marzaroski, uh Bucky Dent with his dramatic home run in, uh, in that uh, winner-take-all uh, game against the uh, Red Sox. That was in the seventh inning, I believe. So, excellent job by the polar bear. I'm and the, Bre sure. the Brewers last night used six pitchers. The Mets only used four pitchers. Yeah. So, Wow. Still, still insane. Uh, the other thing I'm going to point out, I don't, I don't know if you were aware of this. So years ago, my wife, Susan, used to work for an attorney and his partner had season tickets at Shea Stadium and, and they were field boxes. And a lot of times he gave those seats away. And I was the recipient of a lot of those seats that he gave away. So I was actually at the game in 2006 where they, the day they clinched uh, the uh, division against the Florida Marlins or Miami. Well, they were called the Florida Marlins at that time. So I was at that game. Uh, you know, we had great field level seats. Um, so this guy actually got me not, not field level, but he got me a ticket to the uh, 2006 game seven of the NLCS against the Cardinals. So I was there. Nice. I, saw, I saw the Andy Chavez. I, I was actually, those seats were mezzanine box seats and I was in left field. So I was literally right there to see Andy Chavez is uh, robbing the home run. At least you were there. I was there and I thought that that was going to be their momentum changer, but wasn't meant to be. Instead, it was the Cardinals who broke our hearts. And you know what? Leaving the and, and I saw the uh, you know, uh, what the hell's his name who was pitching for the Cardinals? Uh, uh, I forget his name, but he was pitching to uh, Carlos Beltran and he threw that hook, uh, dropped into the strike zone, called strike three, series over. There was like a in unison, it was like, ah, like the air was let out of the stadium, and then you could hear a pin drop. And it, very, everybody very quietly walked out of Shea Stadium. It was like the saddest night of my life. 
So I, I kind of empathize with the uh, Brewers fans, but fun, you know, there was that. There was the disappointment of 2016 where they lost the one game series to the Giants. There was 2022 where they lost two out of three at home to the Padres. So I think last night cleared up a lot of that, at least in my mind. Uh, I have no problem with 2015 because at least they made it all the way to the World Series. Against the Royals, right? That Against was. the Royals. You know what? It would have been nice to win or, or have more than five games. But you know what? Royals were the better team and they deserved to win. But those other those other years left a very bitter taste. So last night, I think cured a lot of that for at least this Mets fan. Yes, and the Royals. Speaking of the Royals, they play the Yankees tomorrow. They do. That brings up that brings back a lot of memory memories. So George and I actually offered for him to be on the on the show with us tonight, but he had plans with my daughter. So to no avail but we'll we'll have a follow-up at some point but uh he's too young uh they were both uh, born in the early 90s so they don't remember any of the happenings uh in the set late 70s like i i vividly remember it where they basically faced the royals every year from like was it uh 76 77 and 78 and beat them every year uh and then they finally, in 1980, the, the Royals finally swept the Yankees. And, and, and the thing that, that I always remember, and I always get a laugh at, is uh, the Yankees had this manager in 1980, Dick Hauser, who won them 102 games in the regular season. But because they got swept in the playoffs, he got fired by George Steinberg. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but those were the days. But uh, so now George is going to get to experience it for the first time uh, a Yankees Royal Seed Series. I don't know if they've ever played each other since 1980. Well, I would say the Yankees have the better team. So, yeah, to me, they're the favorites there. I would think so. Yeah. I mean, you know what? They had their struggles and they had their doubters. But, and you know what? We could have easily have stepped on their necks when the Mets beat them four out of four this season in, in, the, uh, in the interleague subway series. Right. But you know what? I knew that they were going to pull themselves back up and they were going to play better towards the end. And uh, George actually points out that he thinks it was more to the uh, Orioles, Orioles credit that the Yankees pulled it out because the Orioles slumped also. At the same time, yes. Because yeah. the Orioles had a great season, and then they sort of fell yeah. apart, unfortunately, towards the end. Right, yeah. I mean, we beat them two out of three in that series at City Field, but those were tough games. They, they I mean, were... the, the Birds used to be a bad team, and now they're really good. Oh, yeah. they. You know what? He is very relieved that both the Bird the Orioles are out and the, the uh, cheating Astros are out. And <laughs> What and the about? Braves, the Braves are out too. Yeah, but uh, going back to the Astros, you notice how uh, how they couldn't hit a lick uh, because they had no garbage cans to bang on or and <laughs> and, and no uh, buzzers in, attached to their bodies. It, it's funny how they're they're human all of a sudden, and what they score one run in those two games, something like and that. One of the local sportscasters here on TV always calls them the cheating Astros, just like you did. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember 86, and uh, I, I would have liked to have my my brother on, but he had plans tonight also. Uh, did you ask uh, Chuck or Pete to come on? Nah, you know what? They're, they're busy, and you know what? Unless I could get them both on, I, I didn't think it was worth it to have either one or the other. But, okay. You know what? I'll, I'll put some feels out for, you know, in the next week or so. We'll see what we can do. And this was so impromptu anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So basically how this came about was uh, Davey IM'd me earlier today and asked me if I wanted to do a, an episode about the Mets on, on my channel. And, uh, and I'm like, sure. 
I was thinking about doing it anyway. So nice. Um, so back to 86. And this is another little known fact. Uh, Mets had this former pitcher, Mike Scott, pitching for the Astros. Uh, you remember that name? I know the name. He was virtually unhittable. So game one of that NLCS, he shut the Mets out one to nothing. Uh, game four, it was, beat the Mets three to one at Chase Stadium. Uh, the Mets knew that if they didn't get to, if they didn't beat the Astros in game six, they would have had to face him in game seven. And it was almost, almost certain would be an upset facing Mike Scott in game seven. So, uh, so what they, so basically what they did was they rallied <laughs> similar to the, what this Mets team's done rallied with three runs in the ninth inning to tie it, scored a run in the 14th inning to take the lead. Astros retied them on a Mickey Hatcher homer. Uh, 16th inning, they scored three, and they needed every one of those runs because the Astros scored two runs in the bottom of the 16th. But Mr. Orozco, with my wonderful Jesse Orozco pose, oh, yeah. finally, finally held out and, and, and beat them. Um, so there's a couple things to take away. One... It was rumored that Mike Scott was scuffing the baseball, which is uh, illegal. You can get thrown out. That's just like throwing a spitball. But they couldn't, uh, they couldn't uh, prove it, that he was doing it. So he got away with it. But we prevailed. Uh, another thing. Uh, so back then, I was in, up, up at, away at college, and I was actually working at this pl place on campus called the Rat Skeller. And in the bottom of the 16th inning, everybody left their post to go out and watch the big screen. So we all got to watch that bottom of the 16th, you know, uh, a Roscoe. And you know what? The, uh, after that final out, the place just erupted. Everybody you know, hugging each other. It was, it was really nice. Meanwhile, my, my father was traveling, so he wasn't home. It was just my brother and mother back home with me away at college. Uh, and he was just a nervous wreck that whole 16 innings. And uh, rumor has it that after that final out, he ran out into the street, hooping and hollering and screaming and yelling. And yeah, it, it, and I, I was hoping to have him on so I could get his perspective. Would have been cool. But uh, you know what? Maybe I'll try for next week. We'll see. Okay. And nowadays, because of the new rules in baseball, most games don't even go to 16 innings or anywhere close to that. Oh yeah, it's well, rare. Now, now you got now you got that automatic man on second. So uh, did they did they take that away in, in in the postseason or is that still a thing? Wow, I don't know. That's a really good question. That is a good question. So uh, help us out, viewers. Is is it is it is it a rule or is it not a rule? I could probably ask Google after the fact, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, good question. I could I could text my cousin now if you want. He might know. Sure, go right okay. ahead. You want to vamp for a moment while I do that? Sure. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll show. I'm going to get everybody a, show everybody a book that I have. I'm going to text my cousin. Whoa. Oh. I think everybody has seen this book. I've talk, talked about it a few t times. I have that book here. Oh, you do too, huh? When Shay was home. But uh, what I didn't do is uh, show any pictures. Are there any pictures? Oh, there's a few. Hmm. Just bear with me a second there. Oh, uh, I thought I... Oh, Jerry Kuzman. Who else do we have in the book? He was a great pitcher, by the way. He was another great pitcher. Tom Seaver. T Tom Terrific. He said yes. They took it away. Oh, wow. Huh. Wow. That's something else. They're not part of the playoffs, he says. Wow, I don't like that. I, I don't like that rule. 
Thank you to my cousin, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. So now yes. extra innings can go as far as 16 innings until someone wins. Yeah. No yeah. man on second. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, and let me tell you, that was that was brutal watching that game because – and I knew as well as they do that, you know, we didn't want to have a game seven. But you know what? As they say, cheaters never prosper. So – Exactly. So uh, that's that, unless you have anything else to add. Uh, basically, you and I got to experience, and I was telling this to my son, Jason, uh, I got to experience my own shot hurt around the world. So we did. Yes. All my fans. So it's a very proud moment for everybody in Flushing, Queensland, uh, City Field. And uh, you know what? I'll, I'll say it here. I, I may never be able to doubt this team again. I mean, how can you? They keep coming through in the clutch. Just when yeah. you think they're out, they get up off the mat to use a boxing yeah. metaphor and, and they're right know, back in it. My credit to the Brewers manager said, you know what? They have a gr very gritty hitters, that, guys that just never quit. Uh, they're good two strike hitters. They foul a lot of balls off. They, they see the strike zone very well. And, you know, for for a guy that was 1-11 in the series to go up and, and you know, recognize that changeup and hit it, hit it out of the ball, a changeup, no less. He hit, he muscled yeah. it out over right field for an opposite field homer. And, of Amazing. course, some guys who also might get forgotten, Lindor got the walk. Yeah. yeah. On oh, well, three and Lindor. two, and he didn't swing. And ball four, he got on first. Yeah. Then Nimmo gets the single to advance him to third. But I was thinking, and I think a lot of Mets fans were thinking, Alonzo's going to hit into a double play, and it's all over. Yeah. But credit to Alonzo, Nimmo, and Lindor there in the ninth inning. So here's a question before we end. Uh, do they re-sign Alonzo now? He's a hometown hero. He's always yeah. been a great Met. I would say yes. I would, I would want to maybe, I think if they offered him maybe, I don't know, two to four year con, maybe three to four year contract, I'd like to keep him. He's going to be looking for a longer con. Nimmo got eight years. He's going to be looking eight to 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's very risky in this day and age. And you know what? It was very risky for Lindor. I mean, I remember early in the season. Uh, oh, so it was about. Early July, everybody's like, oh, oh, you New Yorkers, you you don't know how good you have at having uh, Lindor on your team. How could you not put him in the All-Star game? Well, guess what? He had a shitty April and a shitty May. He, he basically came around in June finally. Right. I mean, he's he's had basically four excellent months, June, July, August, September. Uh, but you know what? The all-star game is predicated on the first three months of the season. You know what? You've got to start a little quicker. But yes. you know what? I, th I thank my lucky stars that he's finally living up to that contract. Good for you, Francisco. Yes. Keep up the good work, man. And all the Mets, keep up the great work. We yes. love you, and we hope you go all the way to the World Series. And, uh, and uh, before we sign off, uh, one – two, three. Let's, let's go, go Mets. Mets. And let's blank go Mets. I'm not yes, going to say it on yep. the air. <laughs> and, and personally for me, I mean, my father was a diehard Mets fan. He started out because the Brooklyn Dodgers went to LA and my father hated them ever since. He hated the Giants for leaving. Right. He liked the Yankees, but when the Mets started in 61, he became a Mets fan. He was a diehard Mets fan. 62, so he saw the 69. 62, 62, I believe they started. 62, sorry. That's okay. And my dad saw the Mets win the 69 series, the 86 series. Awesome. And before he passed away last year, I always wanted him to see a third Mets victory. Yeah. So I really hope for my father's sake and in tribute to him that the Mets go all the way this year. Well, I can tell you, Davey, he was looking down and very proud last night. 
So. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I I totally get it, man. But uh, you know, uh, it, j that's why that's part of the reason I'm so happy for like Red Sox fans and Cubs fans because who knows how many people might not have seen them uh, right the promised land. Whereas. Here we are, an expansion. We're still considered an expansion team, and we've won two. And we're, we're one of the – I think we were – for a long time, the Mets were considered um, the, the first um, expansion team to get to, to get to the World Series and win it the fastest. And then, and then I think the, uh, the Florida Marlins uh, took that away from us. And, and the Mets have only won two in 60-plus years, so I'm hoping that yeah. third time's the charm this year. Yeah, you know what? I still think that they're a couple pieces short, but you know what? Anything's possible. Then again, They've got I great momentum. I didn't think the 2007 Giants could do it. New York football Giants, but, uh, you know, football is a little different. They only had to play four games. Whereas the Mets, you know, it's more of a, ma a, a marathon, you know, five game series against the Phillies, uh, seven game potential series against either the Dodgers or the Padres, right? seven games in the World Series. It's like, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's why I can't understand what, you know, how they do that in hockey and basketball. Just nuts. It's, those sports are so fast paced. Yeah. It's like there's like no downtime in hockey. It's like you start in the beginning of October. They're already talking about going to Ranger games, my boss anyway. Uh, and then they, they, the championship happens in what, mid to late June now. And then what do you have? Two, three months off and then it's back, you know, back on the ice. Unbelievable. I'll stick sports to sports are huge here in New York. Yep. Yep. Great New York town. And you know what? Um, so the people that live outside the New York area that that are watching, that aren't really fans of any of the New York sports scene, I hope you use this as like a metaphor for sports in general. And just, you know, see our passion for, you know, for these teams. So. It's going to be a busy uh, sports weekend this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You because the, the, Jet, the Jets are in England, right? Jets are in England. They're facing a, a red-hot Vikings team. Uh, my prospects for the, uh, for the uh, Giants have just sunk because they're going to Seattle on Sunday, and they, uh, they're minus Malik Neighbors, who supposedly I just found out he didn't pass the pro per, uh, uh, concussion protocol. So that that's a problem. And he was doing he was doing okay this season for them. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll have him back in another week or two. But exactly. Unbelievable. But anyway, you know what? We have our Mets to watch this weekend. So let's go, Mets. We love Precisely. Them. Yep. All right. Have a good one all. And we will talk soon. Jack told Thanks for having Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was I was just saying thanks for having me on and look for me on Cretan Classics. Okay, we will do that. Thank Speak you, Jack. You got it, man. Speak soon. Bye, all.